Tim. Thanks Carl. For, thanks for joining me by. It's a pleasure to be back, sir. Absolutely. All the way across. Yes, I'm yes. having dinner for lunch and supper for breakfast, and I still don't know what the heck I'm going to have for lunch. How about that? <laughs> well, I just had a Caesar salad. Um, I was, Is that a salad with a Caesar? Yeah, with chicken. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I figured it's a beautiful day, sunny day in Vancouver. Yes. Why don't we go I for didn't a... recognize the place, actually, with the sun out, so with all due respect to the Vancouverites in the audience. Well, yeah, we're blessed today. I'm from Toronto, and, you know, it's been like almost 80 days of overcast, which is typically what you get here. So, you know, if you take in this vitamin, uh, what do they call it? Vitamin, vitamin D, D, I think, yeah. yeah. It's nice and free uh, today. Okay, so we're going to get an update on the company here, and uh, I think we're going to go for a drive through Stanley Park. Oh, good. All right. So, um, I think it's been at least two years since we spoke. I always try to start off with capital market stuff. Um, what's your ownership in the company right now? Single largest shareholder, of course, is, is Mr. Sprott, somewhere between 26 and 27%. And, uh, and after that, it's, it's pretty widely held, uh, Carl. I mean, we, we don't, management controls probably you know, 5% or something like that. Uh, so we're, 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 pretty, we're pretty widely distributed, if, if that's a, a way to put it. But, uh, um, yeah, uh, there aren't any major institutions holding significant chunks of us either. So, um, but you know what? Um, I look at it this way: you know, it's it's no trouble to get in and get a position, and it's no trouble to get out of your position if you want to. And uh, um, I'd rather have that, I think, than trade by appointment. The results have not landed on your desk yet. No, um, I was really hoping to have some pretty robust updates on both Moosehead and the uh, Golden Hope, which is the new lithium uh, uh, target we're, uh, you know, glad to have and right in our backyard. Um, again, you know, the labs are still obviously very busy, and uh, but uh, news is very close. I think by, by mid-February we should have uh, really, and I think, exciting updates. Uh, uh, I'm biased, of course, but uh, that's about all I can say for now. Uh, yep. Until it becomes public, but no, we are, you know, expecting some, um, some some really interesting results on both the lithium side of things and the gold at Moosehead. I know, um, you know, obviously people are into our stock initially because you know of our gold uh, properties, and and we still are primarily a gold company, Carl. But uh, you know, when an opportunity like Golden Hope comes along, you find a commodity commodities now actually with the cesium and the tantalum and everything else associated with it. Uh, you know, we owe it to our shareholders to figure out just how interesting this is and, and potentially lucrative to, to the company. So, uh, uh, so Benton, uh, our joint venture partner, you know, have been uh, awesome from the start. They operate the project, by the way. And, um, you know, so we're, again, you know, we're waiting on assays, but uh, we're about to kick off 2023, another 3 to $5 million program there. Uh, heavily, heavily drilling based, but again, it's a large project. We've really only examined 10 to 15 percent of it, uh, Carl, in any detail. Mm -hmm. And you know, the geochemistry that uh, uh, the geochem results we're getting back from our recon soil sampling is indicating there are more dikes out there based on what we know about the main discovery area and the soil geochemistry we have there. Um, it's telling us that uh, you know, these dikes are. Uh, are out there to be found uh, in addition to what we've already known. So uh, it's going to be an exciting year for us on that property. Yeah, and uh, this type of uh, deposit that you're going after is high grade and I hate, it. it's it's small and high grade. Is that accurate? This is the moose head you're talking about? Moose head, yes. Yes, the gold, Sorry. yes, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, well, they, they tend, you know, it's vein hosted deposits by their very nature. They generally don't lead to, you know, tens or hundreds of millions of tons <laughs> of material. Uh, they are generally high grade and, uh, and more confined, yes. And, and our drilling today has certainly verified that. And, uh, and we've stuck to a very tight, uh, you know, drilling pattern here just to figure out the structure of the system. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, as a result, you know, the, the, the footprint probably isn't as large as, as what people might be thinking, but, uh, you know, we're stepping out now, we're testing, you know, new targets as well as uh, um, more regional sort of uh, efforts on the known mineralization. And um, uh, again, um, I, I can't say very, very much beyond, <laughs> you know, just suggesting some things, but, uh, you know, we'll have some exciting news on, uh, on, on the main zone front as well as maybe some interesting uh, 
bits of uh, uh, new stuff uh, for people to, uh, to, uh, to, to ponder in mm -hmm. the very near future. So this type of deposit is, like if we were to look at an example of a deposit that's being mined right now and produced, um, would be Kirkland Lake? Uh, well, the Fosterville mine, uh, which was, of course, uh, brought to, you know, a very extreme prominence, if you will, by, uh, by Kirkland Lake Gold. They're now, of course, part of uh, Agnico Eagle. But uh, in Australia, the Fosterville mine is um, a very strong, uh, similar in, in terms of its geological setting, its structural style, the type and tenor of, of the gold uh, uh, mineralization in the veins as well as accessory minerals. Uh, you know, you check off a lot of boxes. If you were looking for a Fosterville type uh, 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 situation, Moosehead would certainly have a lot of, the, you know, a lot of check marks in the, uh, in the positive column for that. And uh, of course our, you know, our competitor or, or I guess our, our uh, competitor for that uh, newfound gold uh, just to the east of us are also chasing a similar type of target and um, obviously with some uh, pretty stunning results over the past couple of years and uh, meaning you know uh, this is not a fluke and uh, so you know we've still got you know some work to do ahead of us but uh, um, all the indications are that uh, you know the system is still alive and again you know with results pending um, I can't really say much more than that but uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the, uh, things ended up in 2022 and uh, I think uh, 2023 will open up with a bang. Mm -hmm. And so they're not, they, yeah, maybe they're a competitor, but that they've brought a lot of eyeballs back back into Newfoundland. Yes. So yep. that's good for everybody. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? Their success is our success. And, um, you know, it's a very open sort of style of uh, of exploration in Newfoundland. I've, I know I've worked in, in many jurisdictions where, you know, uh, people are very keep keep their cards close to their chest don't let anything out but you know if, if another company that's you know joining us or has ground that you know we once explored or something I'll tell me everything I know I'll spill my guts because I mean if uh, like I said I mean if, if someone makes a discovery in Newfoundland it, it benefits the whole Newfoundland play and uh, you know I think uh, um, you know we are that now it's not just individual companies with individual uh, projects uh, Newfoundland is a bona fide play now like the Golden Triangle in BC and things like that um, and, you know, any success in that is good for the group, and uh, I'm very happy with that. Yeah. So how much uh, money is in the till? You did close a flow-through over yes. yep. around the holidays. That's right, yeah. Right now we're between 7 and $8 million, um, and the reason why we, we did a flow-through uh, at this time, uh, Carl, was all the money that was in our treasury prior to that were hard dollars. And you know, you, you, you really need to protect those as a junior company. They are the lifeblood of a junior. They pay bills that, you know, flow through money just doesn't pay. And it just didn't make sense for us to burn, you know, millions of dollars uh, with the drill bit. I was on a bit of a roll for a while. Like we did several, you know, subsequent financings over the past few years that were always, uh, you know, maybe not doubles or anything, but they were progressively higher and higher and higher. And, and it was, I took it personally that this you know, last one was, was where it was, but you know what? It was well oversubscribed, so people wanted to buy the stock. It's not like we had to beg people to buy it, and, uh, and it brought new blood in. Um, so it's, th those are all positive things in my mind. And, and again, getting back to the treasury, I mean, um, I, I prefer just to you know, burn money in the drill bit uh, that uh, you know, is a tax benefit to, uh, to shareholders. So, uh, yeah. so there you go. Okay. Um, what's the plan with the drill bit? Are you just waiting for these results to kind of get, um, you know, firm up your strategy or do you kind of have most of it in place? Uh, no, the strategy is pretty much in place. Um, Moosehead, we've still got probably 20,000 meters uh, on, on what was initially our 20,000 meter program, which became a 50,000 meter program, which became a 100,000 meter program. So we've drilled about 80,000 meters of that 100,000 and and guess what? I mean, we hit 100,000, we're not stopping. You know, it's just gonna keep going. And I, I can't give a number as to what the next program will be, but uh, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, we'll keep drilling until either we're satisfied that we've got, uh, you know, the thing drilled off or we don't get any more gold or whatever. But uh, so Moosehead is, is pretty simple. I mean, uh, so yeah, I mean, we know what we have to do at Moosehead and let's make it bigger. Uh, like I said before, uh, you know, we, we've, we've followed a stringent and you know, uh, regimented pattern of, of drilling this thing off just so we don't miss anything. Now it's time for us to start making it bigger. 
and that's a long strike. And a lot of people have been wondering, well, when are you going to drill a deep hole? Well, we'll get there, but we're going to get there in stages. And uh, there is plans to, you know, start expanding on on the depth of uh, of mainly the eastern trend. Uh, that's that's the largest zone we have. But uh, certainly, you know, all of our all of our zones will be tested uh, to some degree this year. And at the uh, and at the lithium project, uh, Golden Hope. Uh, uh, we, we've got just so many untested targets, it's, uh, it's silly. Um, plus, you know, um, the soil geochemistry is telling us that, uh, you know, these things keep going, you know, based on what we know uh, from the areas that we have done soils uh, and proven, you know, through surface exposures that, you know, these things work. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're <laughs> There's going to be a lot of data coming out uh, in the next six months, and I think a lot of it is going to be very positive. The Golden Hope project, which yeah. people are saying, well, why don't they call it the Lithium Hope or something? Well, because th when we staked the ground initially, we, uh, you know, we were focused on two known gold-bearing structures in southwestern Newfoundland, kind of away, if you will, from the main central Newfoundland gold, uh, gold play. Uh, but um, interestingly enough, where um, Newfoundland's uh, most significant uh, gold prospects lie. So, you know, we weren't staking just moose pasture. I mean, we were staking, you know, uh, some seriously, you know, uh, high potential ground. And uh, uh, <laughs> we weren't long into the process of prospecting for gold when um, we happened upon uh, uh, these dikes uh, uh, down in the southwest corner of the property. And uh, we knew they were different from the start, um, and um, they weren't certainly something you'd look for for gold. And we sent them in, and sure enough, it uh, verified that we had made a uh, an interesting uh, and early stage, but potentially significant uh, lithium discovery. And subsequent to that, late last fall, just as the snow was starting to fly, unfortunately, uh, we actually made a, a, a new discovery uh, uh, of uh, cesium and tantalum rich, uh, rich material that's 12 kilometers away from our initial uh, uh, lithium discovery. And um, we weren't, you know, unfortunately winter came and uh, we weren't able to get back and, and do any more follow up. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of our top priorities for this year is to see where that is. And, and you know, people say, well, what is, what is the significance of cesium? Well, it's a critical mineral. Um, it's it's kind of a, a bit of a mystery in terms of uh, it's it's you know it's market uh, you know the market just isn't as uh, I guess transparent if you will uh, as um, as the gold or the copper market it, it it's it's a small market but uh, potentially a lucrative one um, there are very few producers there's only one that we know of and uh, again anything that's on the critical minerals list is is something that uh, you know if you find it uh, you really need to pay attention to it because. Uh, you know, this is something that the U.S. government could suddenly just start stockpiling and buying all they can. I mean, yeah, for uh, ge geopolitical reasons. Exactly. So, uh, um, so anyway, but but obviously the main prize at Golden Hope is uh, Carl the uh, you know the lithium and uh, you know um, most of our targets are indeed lithium you know lithium first, and if we can have a significant credit with, uh, uh, with credits in the in the other metals, uh, um, all the best. All the better for us. So, uh, yep, uh, certainly an exciting project, and uh, I'm looking forward to that one as much as Moosehead. Okay. Um, well, I think I think that covers a lot right now, without getting extremely technical in uh, into the geology of the of Moosehead um, and and the lithium asset. Uh, but we will be at uh, PDAC and. Fingers crossed. Yes, these results will be out, and we can get into into that stuff and and uh, see where the reaction is in the market. See, you know, see what happens there, right? Yes. Um, I know you were looking forward to having those results out for Burek, but unfortunately, out of your control. Um, anything else that you know we haven't covered that we should? Well, I think uh, well something you alluded to a little later on. I mean, uh, you know what uh, you know what is the focus or what what will be the focus for. Um, for Sakama moving forward and and again I'll stress you know and, and this is you know for our shareholders you know we are still a gold focused company you know we just happen to you know pick up uh, a lithium you know lotto ticket on our on one of our gold projects and uh, you know um, we're going to be as you know expeditious as we can in, in bringing this you know thing either as a as an asset within uh, Sockerman and, and Benton uh, uh, collectively, the joint venture. Uh, but, you know, I think at some point, you know, you may see that as an opportunity to 
give our shareholders uh, a little, you know, present with a with a dividend, you know, yeah. a, a new company. Um, like I said, uh, if if you're a gold company, you should be a gold company, and uh, just because you find something else doesn't mean you should be, you know, penalized for it and and have people wondering, well, what you, what are you? But uh, at the same time, uh, I don't want to, you know, dilute, you know, um, the gold side of Sockerman, yeah. uh looking for other commodities. Mm -hmm. So. I think you know some people should, that that should be welcome to some of our core shareholders who are you know staunch gold fans. But uh, um, you know we're, we haven't lost sight of of our of our focus. But you know as an exploration company, we do owe it to our shareholders to evaluate any and all you know potential uh, value in uh, that may be locked in our properties that may be in other commodities. So uh, um, this year will be a very pivotal year for that for that aspect. Well, I think that's a good place to leave it. I will do a little U-turn here and drop you off at uh, your hotel. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Chris and Kyle. Those are two friends of mine that I know own your stock. They follow your story and your journey and they will be very interested in those results uh, and hopefully we can have this discussion at PDEC. Well, hang in there, Chris and Kyle and, and everybody else. Uh, uh, I know it's been, uh, you know, um uh, suffering for for all of us in terms of you know uh, why aren't the shares you know, more highly valued? Uh, I mean I can't answer that you know with a with an answer that will satisfy anyone. But uh, um, I think your money is being you know well managed. Um, we're not a wasteful company, and um, yeah, I, I like our chances of, uh, of finding something significant uh, on on both Moosehead and the. Um, and the Golden Hope with respect to the lithium. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Might as well give a shout out to Eric's brought to. Hi, Eric. Don't know you, but maybe one day we'll meet. <laughs>